Hi, you're watching Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media, all of our platforms. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio, and that young man in purple is... Rick Levy in San Diego, modeling Rick. the Tequila Aficionado gear. That's it. He's he's uh, totally on board with the, the merch. You can find the merchandise, by the way, on our Facebook page and also on our website. Don't forget to get your t-shirt. <laughs> or your Any mug. color you want. Any color. Uh, or your hoodie. You know, we're going to be up in Mammoth, and at night, it still gets, it still gets uh, chilly there in August. So uh, you, know, you might, wanna, you might want a, a, a tequila aficionado hoodie. And you're going to design some yoga pants too, right? We actually have, we have, we have, <laughs> we have yoga pants. They say tequila aficionado on the side of it. Take it, check it out. If you, yeah. you know, if you're, if. Don't wear not, them when you're dropping your kids off at school in the morning. Well, <laughs> you know, you know, have you seen where they're doing beer yoga? There, there's a, uh, there's a, there's a thing, you know, they do yoga with goats. Goat right? yoga. Yeah. Goat yoga. Now they have beer yoga where you hold your beer and you're doing the movements and stuff like that. And at the end of the whole session, you know, you get to down your O'Doul's or whatever, whatever it is that you're drinking, you know? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so they have beer whatever. yoga. Uh, but we want, I'm not even going to join a yoga place until they have tequila yoga. That's when I'm sold. Then I'm wearing the skinny jeans. <laughs> um, we have been falling all over ourselves this evening with, Onilikin or Onilikin, and uh, we have we have gone the range from Mexican gin, which is agave spirit based, and, and we figured it out because this stuff is so well made that you could taste the agave and smell it, which was really unusual for us. Then we graduated over to the uh, uh, the blue agave aguardiente which was really different, lots of different layers on this. And so now we're going to try the Aguardiente de Mango. Now, uh, I've made mention of this before on, on, on the earlier reviews. If you have never heard of these guys, check them out on YouTube. They have like a series of four or five videos, instructional videos in English and Spanish uh, about their distillery. Uh, apparently, they've been distilling since 2011. They are in Mazatlan, Mexico, so it's a, it's a tourist attraction. They have their own store, their own shop. Um, it doesn't tell us a whole lot about their method of distillation. I, I, if you look at the still, it's, a, it's a, an Austrian design. It looks like a small column still, but it's got all these branches and, and, and copper and stainless steel. It's very shiny. Hmm. And, um, but, but there's no information on, on how that process works for them. Um, and but we area, know the makers are Canadian. Yes, and and the area is well known for their mangoes. So, in keeping with that thing, they have made an aguardiente de mango. And I'll be honest, I've never up until up until I have last no idea what to expect. Yeah, me neither. So so we're gonna use our our stossel. Oh, that's I'm mango. Using, is that mango? That's mango. What was the name of what was it the name of the one of the characters of Saturday Night Live? Mango. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was uh, <laughs> was named Chris something or other. He was like I forget I forget which one. It was when he was the one for he used to didn't he do um, uh, Night of the Roxbury? He was uh, yeah he was yeah that he was one. also the guy that would like dress up like this monkey and like eat the fruit and spit yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so that's. We're gonna. I'm gonna wow. try it with a Stossel Mezcal Jarrito. All right, I have the Stossel Tequila Jarrito. Now, Rick is already ex exclaiming about the the nose and and um. I I I don't know what to expect. This has been a complete surprise to me. I'll preface this: I'm not a big mango guy because I usually That's find it way too sweet. Yeah. Well. Okay. And, and Mexico, they, they make a big deal about uh, this particular distillery makes a big deal about they use whatever fruit and whatever herbs and whatever um, botanicals that are indigenous to the state into that area. So they didn't go anywhere outside, anywhere else to source this stuff. Like they're not using cinnamon yeah. for Salem or anything like that. It's, yeah. all, it's all Mexican. Well, and it was really lovely in the gym. Yes. 
Yes, it was. It was. It was. And the aguardiente was was spectacular. Yeah. The whole rainbow, whole spectrum of flavors at the beginning. It was a really great representation of the agave. Yeah. Now this one again, I'm assuming they're using agave it, uh, that is agave based um, aguardiente, uh, which translates to fire water um, and mango. So I am enjoying the 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 mango nose it's not overwhelming but it's full mango yes it it's it's a it's a full mango but it's not super it's not um it's not a a what's the word it's not an artificial smell because you know like in tequila for instance you're you're allowed some to use some enhancements as long as it's not you know uh uh dangerous to human consumption yeah, but this is this is natural. This is not, and it's not, not like the uh, it's not like you know an overripe been sitting on your counter too long. Yeah, <laughs> mango. It's, it's not enhanced. It's not enhanced. <clears throat> it's actually very pleasant. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's full mango, but it's not intense. It's not overpowering. Yeah, and, and it's not Are you picking the, up anything else around the edges? I'm trying to get some agave. Down at the bottom, I get a little bit more alcohol. And and. Do you think there's any agave in here, or is it just all made from mango? Uh, no, it, I, I'm. I don't know. They don't. They don't tell us. Yeah, no, I, I'm not. I'm not finding any agave. Well. There's no, um, you know, at the, in the other two. Um, yeah. You know, like in, on the others, they have like the artwork yes. and then they have the they have have the agave artwork for the agave. This one doesn't have that. No. This one has artwork of an agave. I mean, of a, of a mango. Right. And here's what it says. Spirit distilled from mango. So yeah. it's, it's a spirit distilled from mango. Yeah, so I'm not. I wouldn't expect to find any agave in here. No. Nope. Maybe they they're, you know, maybe they're doing something with the other indigenous botanicals. But I, I don't know. Frankly, the, you know, the agave nose is so full that I'm having trouble pulling other stuff out. You mean the mango nose? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We, we don't know. We don't know. You know what their base is. I. I, I would have. You know, if it were me, and I'm not a distiller, so I, I don't know, not even a micro distiller, but you know, you have that base that you made your Mexican gin with, and, and that you made your agua de blue agave with. So one would assume that if you were going to make a a, a, a mango agua that you would use the same agave as a base. But I, I'm not going to assume anything. Yeah. Else. No. I would be wary of going there on this one. Yeah, I don't smell any. Um, I, 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 that's why I say I kept trying to find it. And it's not there. All I'm has getting some, is... has some nice legs on it. Looks nice in the glass. Yeah, it, it's it's very pristine. It's very pretty. Nice nice legs and tears. Um, and you know what? Oh, yeah. They're not very clingy. They're they're. I, I'd hesitate. I would say that they're not even using glycerin. I think this is really, a, and yeah. they say it, it, all their process is natural, so they don't do anything. They don't add anything that's not that's not from from the fruit itself or or whatever bases they're using. Yeah, and I didn't pick up any glycerin in the other products. Yeah, I, I don't either. All right, I'm going in. Okay. Oh. 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 Boom. Oh, that's really neat. What kind of veget veget there's a vegetal at, at the end. As well, you know, it's a similar reaction that I had with the yeah, almost uh, like a almost like a fresh green bean or something. Like an asparagus? No, just like no? a a green bean. A green bean. Yeah. 
there's really something in there that I, I can't I can't place. And it's 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 not herbal. It's it's green. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm really pleasantly surprised at uh, how I was expecting this to be pretty sweet. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, so I'm pleasantly surprised to find that it's not, you know, like that full mango sweetness. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, they they do make a mango a liqueur. Um, we didn't know this until we started this 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 evening that Rick did not get a bottle of the liqueur. So I don't have it. I will I will bring it with me, and if we have some time, we might do a side by side live. <laughs> With, you know, and and then we can we can say yay or nay whether what you know this is a liqueur, so I would imagine it'd be a lot sweeter. This is this is rather dry though, Rick. Yeah, it doesn't have a sweet aftertaste. It's not. Um, it's different than the gin because the gin kind of stuck to the palate a little bit, uh, purposely because. And I it's like the uh, the mango I get is almost more in the uh, in the alcohols evaporating on my palate than in the juice itself yeah now the juice has some great lip numbness i'm getting a lot of that and i do still get some of that black pepper but it isn't as intense as it was in the blue agave agua de diente this one this one's there but it's not intensified because that yeah. that one with the blue agave was explosive that was just wow yeah well i would say that you know for mango this is pleasantly subtle yeah, now now this one, this aguardiente, would be a great mixer. Correct? Am I correct in assuming that th this, you know, because it's 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 um, it's not as complex as the other two, in my opinion. So it might lend itself better to to mixing, and to cocktails, mm -hmm. right? Am I right? Yeah, I could see that. Okay. Uh, what kind of cocktail? Uh, you're putting me on the spot. Well, you know, even a Paloma, if you were to put this in like a, a Sprite or something or, or a grapefruit juice. Yeah. Almost like gin and juice, almost. Um, uh, or like an orange juice, maybe. Because it, it's not, um, the mango isn't, like you said, it's not sweet. And it's not bitter. It's just I like the idea. I like the idea of going with grapefruit. I do too. I could totally, I could totally see this with like a squirt and uh, a slice of mango hanging on the glass. Yeah, because because this is not sweet. This is this is um, I don't want to even call it bitter. It's almost like it's it's almost <laughs> like it's it's in between a green. You know how you get some fruit that are it, it's still green. It's just starting to turn ripe, yeah. but it's not so ripe that it's so sweet, and it's not so right. green. It's really hard. It's kind of like it's like ripe. Right there, right in between. Like when you buy bananas at Walmart. <laughs> you have to buy them green because, you know, sooner or later they're going to turn really yellow badly, quickly, especially here in in Texas. Um, this is really different. It's not what I expected. No, I'm pleasantly surprised. Yeah, but but it's a, uh, you know, it's more dry than uh, than what I thought it sweet. would be. It it it's more on the dry side with some pepper in it and it's it's Yeah. It's you, like I say it's not as complex as the other two, but there's certainly stuff going on there. You could do some interesting stuff with this with bitters, you know, like maybe some uh, blood orange bitters or uh oh, you know, gosh. um yeah, that'd be neat. Yeah, you, you know, so the, 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 use some use some bitters that aren't uh, that aren't so bitter, because <laughs> you know there are some bitters that you know are a lean towards the sweet side, and well, uh, there's that green aftertaste. It's it's really different, and then and then the pepper right on the back of the palate, and again it's it's a it's like a it's like a, a, a an oily pepper I, I know you said it was like yeah. black pepper but i i really the only thing i can i can i can compare it to would be like a like an oily if you're if you're cutting into an anaheim green chili that kind of thing and you get some of that oil 
on your hands and you accidentally touch your lips or something. And that, that's the, that's the, the, the hot, the, the hot that I get. maybe have it, maybe have it with a slice of peppered mango. Oh, with some, oh, oh, well, tahine, I guess. Right. Sure. Or even, or even worm salt for that matter. Yeah. Wow. But we would go citrus, right? We wouldn't go, we wouldn't go so sweet as we wouldn't go like pomegranate or anything like that. Would we? I'm not sure. I don't have a lot of experience with pomegranate, to be honest. See, to me, a pomegranate's are really sweet. And and there's some uh, actually uh, there are some pomegranate margaritas that are very well made, and other ones that are super sweet. And and I uh, I couldn't I, I can think of one brand offhand. It's a pomegranate tequila, and I just I don't have I don't care for it. But this is really different. This is really this is the one that, that I think you, you could mix with, in in my opinion, if I were a mixing kind of guy. So yeah, yeah, I might have to play around with this. Are we impressed enough <laughs> to make this a brand of promise in the uh, in the aguardiente category? In the in the Mexican mango spirit category. <laughs> you know, I like I said, we're we're in we're in. Un, we're on uncertain times right now in, in, in the agave industry and people are, are bored. You know, there are a lot of cookie cutter tequilas out there that, mm -hmm. that major players are trying to dumb down our palates. And there are other people that are searching for better. They're searching, like yeah. you said, earlier, the next best thing or yeah, the next, the, uh, the next great craft uh, Mexican spirit. The interesting fringe. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of fringes, uh, <laughs> but I, I really think that this is now, you know, these guys were distilling in 2011. That's when they started. They have a couple of, of medals from the San Francisco World Spirits competition in different years. And I think now they these guys is Canadians or the owners are Canadian. I believe that they that they are. They were ahead of their time and now is their time. Now is a time to start seeking stuff like this. Because I remember seeing these guys, and then and then all of a sudden it just disappeared. You just you couldn't find anywhere and no, any information. And I'm I'm really impressed, man. This is the quality of this stuff. It's not it's not like an infu. It, it's different than the infusions we've had in the past, right? Mm -hmm. It's not it's not enhanced like some of the some of the tequilas and mezcals that we may have had before. This is this is really a category all its own they're out of mazatlan so they're in the state of sinaloa which um, there is one other spirit that is coming out of there right now that is more akin to tequila using blue agave um but this is i'm you know really glad that that uh, creo commercium gave these to us um they've been they've been really fun to experiment with yeah and to open up especially the mexican gin that's a thing now Mezcal gin, everybody's going, you know, there's only so much mezcal to go around. There's only so much agave to go around. So we've, and like you said, we've had, we've had Mexican whiskey, yeah. you know, so why not? Why not? You know, you can still, you can still uh, uh, support the small distiller, still support your friends in Mexico and, and, and still enjoy something that's really well worth uh, finding instead of the mass produced stuff that we're that are flooding the markets now. Yeah, it's fun. Check it out. Have a good time. Yeah, absolutely. Onilikin. That's our take on Onilikin. Another brand of promise in the Aguardiente Mango category. <laughs> <laughs> Aguardiente de Mango. Uh, I, I, this has been fun. I, I have uh, Rick and I have have explored these new agave spirits together. And, and, and I've had a, a lot of mezcalas, but the, these are were totally out of left field for, for me. And it was just fun to, to kind of bounce stuff off of you because I want to make sure that I'm picking up what I think I'm picking up, you know, because, um, you know, uh, especially with the Mexican gin, that, that one was a complete whole. And, and the Aguardiente, uh, uh, the Blue Agave one, that one had a whole spectrum. So I, I'm this to me. It, it probably a notch below, but because, but I think this is the mixer right here. This is the one you want to use for mixing. But yeah. 
hey, you, if you guys have had it, write that in the comments if you're if you if you're watching us on on YouTube. That's our take on O'Nilikin and the, the whole line. Thanks again to Career Commercium in Arizona for giving these to us and and letting us letting us go bananas and mangoes <laughs> and, and fruit with it. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm. Mike you Marcus. cannot have the mango. Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> that was the line from <laughs> SNL. <laughs> to the mango side. Uh, by the way, I think we have a mango colored t shirt that'll match. I'm so, sure. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so that's our take on O'Nilikin. I'm Mike here in San Antonio. That young man is Rick Levy in San Diego. And you've been watching Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media, all of our platforms. Again, subscribe down below, hit that red button. And, and, and Rick will flash you his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. I'm Mike Morales. I'm CEO of Tequila Aficionado Media. And I just wanted to thank you for watching Sipping Off the Cuff. We love doing these reviews for you. Now, if you're an Agave Spirits brand owner and you're watching this, there are three things that I'd like to talk to you about. Number one, if you'd like us to review your Agave Spirit on Sipping Off the Cuff, just send me an email, mike at tequilaaficionado.com. It won't cost you a dime, and I promise you'll get an honest review. Number two, if your brand has been nominated, past or present, as a brand of promise, we can help you promote your brand effectively and affordably over on the tequila PR side of things. Just email me, mike at tequilapr.com. And number three, if your brand has ever been a Brand of Promise nominee or a winner, you automatically qualify with us or to go with us on our next promotional tequila tour. So shoot me an email, tours at tequilaaficionado.com, and I'll send you all the details on our upcoming tequila tour. That's it. Thanks again for watching. Sip wisely.